Like I'm obsessed with finding the best mouse cursor, I'm also very particular about the thing that controls it. Le mouse. I've used many different mice with my Windows computer, and they have their pros and cons, but you can pick and choose. Yet it's not the same with a Mac. Ever since I got this MacBook more than a year ago, I've been on the quest of finding a mouse that's actually enjoyable to use with it. Why won't a generic mouse meant for Windows work for an average Mac user? Well, number one, USB-C ports. Most Windows mice either have a USB-A cable or a wireless dongle that is also USB-A. A MacBook doesn't have such a port. I know, right? Two, Mac-specific things like mouse acceleration that you can't switch off easily, gestures, things like mission control are hard to set up with a random mouse. Three, the trackpad ends up being an easier option to default to because it plays well with macOS. And it's generally a great trackpad, so after trying out a few mice, someone might choose the easy way out. But wait. There's more. I said that I'm looking for a mouse that's actually enjoyable to use, so I've established a few criteria which makes a mouse enjoyable for me. The first one is that it has to be ultra transportable. I use a Mac as more of a portable thing, a laptop, and my Windows laptop as more of a, well, it never leaves the table. It doesn't even have a battery anymore because it bloated up. Oh look, it's deflated again. Wait, can I still use this? So my requirement for a laptop mouse is no cables and no dongles. Or at least a dongle that is not annoying and doesn't stick out 3 hamburgers per square toenail, or around 3 centimeters. It has to have decent enough pulling rate to at least match the ProMotion display on my MacBook, which goes up to 120 Hz. Pulling rate is the frequency at which the device reads the data from the mouse. A pulling rate of 1000 means that the mouse reports its position to the computer 1000 times every second. It's the standard for gaming mice. And number three, it has to have a decent enough Bluetooth connection to not stutter and lag. With that said, let's go over each of the contenders in order that I tried using them with my Mac and we'll soon arrive to the winner. The king of Mac. The conqueror. The first mouse I used was the Steel Series Rival 100 with a cable, so doesn't fit the criteria. So I then chose the Razer Viper Ultimate. It fits the no cable criteria, but the dongle is USB-A, which means it sticks out three hamburgers per square toenail, so no bueno. Then I thought why not buy a mouse that doesn't need a dongle and uses Bluetooth. The world's most recommended, best, coolest, amazing guest mouse, the MX Master 3S. This one probably disappointed me the most. Made a whole video about it. But in short, it feels premium, but the white version quickly gets dirty. The scroll wheel, overrated, although nice to fidget with. It has a nice side scroll feature, but it's the laggiest mouse I've ever used. It has a pulling rate of 125 Hz, which should be decent enough, but the Bluetooth connection is very bad. The cursor teleports. So then I decided why not commit a crime and try the Apple mouse. Made a video about it as well, link in the description right below the like button. My thinking was that if Logitech and Apple don't play nice with each other, then surely Apple's own mouse should have zero Bluetooth lag. And that was the case. But there was one thing that made it not super pleasant to use. Contrary to what most people on the internet say, I didn't find the Magic Mouse to be that horrible. The biggest downside was not the upside down charging, since I only had to charge it like three times, the battery on it is insane, nor was it the shape, I got used to holding it like this and not like this. Sure, the weight could be a little lighter, but that I can also get used to. But it's the sensor. The max pulling rate is 90 Hz. Oh, and it's also at the top of the mouse, so it feels weird at first. Anyway, the 90 Hz pulling rate means that it feels choppy on a display that has promotion, meaning that the display refreshes at 120 Hz. So the mouse is 90 and the display is 120. It also doesn't feel great on my other monitor, which has a 144 Hz display. It would be okay if I was just using the magic mouse, but the not smooth feeling of it is especially noticeable when you switch from the mouse to the trackpad. It suddenly feels like you stopped using toilet paper and switched to wet wipes. The trackpad has 130 hertz pulling rate and the magic mouse 
90 hertz. And it's really noticeable, especially when you quickly switch from one to the other. I often ended up switching to the trackpad when I needed to draw something in Photoshop or do some fine cursor movement in Premiere because the sensor isn't super accurate. But I thought the Magic Mouse was the best option that I can get for the MacBook, but then I randomly stumbled upon a website that had a bunch of mice listed and they measured their Bluetooth latency. Oh look, the Magic Mouse is the worst. So I looked through all of the mice and picked what seemed to be the best looking, least laggy mouse that I could use for Mac. It was the Keychron M3. It had a few things going for it. One, a USB-C dongle. This surprised me since I was looking forever for a mouse with a short dongle like this and wasn't able to find it until now. Two, it was white, so fit nicely with the Mac aesthetic. Three, it had the ability to connect via Bluetooth and most importantly, the latency was amazing, allegedly. So I decided to buy it. And it's the best mouse for Mac that I've ever used. The Bluetooth connection doesn't lag. That's big. It has a high enough pulling rate to at least match the display's refresh rate. 1000 Hertz. With a dongle or 125 via Bluetooth, which is the highest you can go with Bluetooth. It's lightweight and does all the things a normal mouse does without fancy shenanigans. A vanilla experience. It has a simple app that let me map the mission control gesture to this middle mouse button. It lets me easily switch between the Bluetooth mode and the dongle mode from the bottom. It came with two adapters so I could choose which one I want. I ended up using one with my Windows laptop and the other one with the MacBook when I'm not in Bluetooth mode. Of course, I turned off the mouse acceleration with an app called Linear Mouse. Here are the settings that I use for it. Now, it doesn't come without some downsides, but they're the least annoying downsides out of all the mice I've tried with my MacBook. The first one is that the scroll wheel is just a little too easy to click. So sometimes I accidentally middle click something while scrolling. Also, if you don't know what the middle click does, it opens links in a new tab and lets you close tabs without clicking on the little X. Now your life is changed. And the second downside was that switching to this from the magic mouse means no smooth scrolling, not that big of a deal, and shorter battery life. This is a bigger deal. But I haven't been testing it enough to see if battery life is an issue. I'll update the description if it ends up being bad. And there are a few things that I could see being annoying for other people, but that I don't care about. First, it's perfect for my hands, but I have large hands. Second, the texture on the side is barely on the brink of being annoying. My finger naturally rests here, but some people might prefer a grip like this, which would render this texture useless or even worse than not having it. And third, the mouse buttons don't feel as premium, so if you care about that, well, there you go. but it works great. I finally found a mouse that doesn't teleport, is comfortable to hold, has no hard downsides, and has a good enough pulling rate to feel smooth on the screen. Yoink.